Whispering podcast explores guests' encounters with the other world of fairy and ways of connecting with this realm. From listening to messages in owl's hoots, finding a four-leaf clover, chasing rainbows or inviting a gnome to dinner. I'm Claire Sylvan Wand, a fairy whisperer, researcher and your guide on this journey. Take my hand and step into the twilight woodland where they are waiting to meet you. Welcome to the Fairly Whispering Podcast. I'm Claire Silvermont and today I'm speaking with Paul Smith who is an experiencer since childhood of the other world and he's had some fairy experiences and other experiences. Before I introduce my guest for this episode, a reminder that you can follow the podcast on Instagram at fairy underscore whispering underscore podcast i also have a facebook page of the same name fairy whispering podcast twitter at fairy whispering and on my fairy whisper youtube channel where there are video versions of all my episodes including this one all show notes are available on the podcast blog at www fairywhisperer.co.uk and I spell fairy f-a-e-r-y on my website and if you're enjoying the podcast and want to support my work please consider making a donation via my fairy whisperer buy me a coffee page every donation helps me to keep the podcast going thank you thank you to third girl from the left for allowing me to use their track oxygen for the show theme music now on to my guest hello paul hello hey whereabouts are you paul i'm in a a place called stanford la hope which is in essex just outside of london okay i've never been to essex it's on my list because i've got some ancestry there (laughs) oh right okay yeah yeah it's not. It's not as bad as they paint it. <laughs> there's, there's, there's some lovely. Uh, there's some lovely um, green belt in Essex. Some lovely natural spots. So it's uh, like anywhere else, I suppose. It's a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah. Is there some forest there? But... Yeah, we've got Epping Forest, which is That's... very famous. Um, mm. Yeah, Epping Forest. And as I say, I, I live near a place called Wild Country Park, which is really beautiful. Yeah. Um, so there are all sorts of lovely places in Essex. Um, I'll have to show yeah. you around sometime. Yeah, well, I'd like it. You know, when I come up that way, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got where my my relatives were from. They were from um, oh Takeley. Had some relatives in Takeley. I've never heard of that Takeley. Is that is that near Colchester or Chelmsford or? Gosh. I don't know. No, I have no idea. I've not heard it. That must be a very small place somewhere in Essex. Yeah, Dunmo. Oh, uh, great Dunmo, yeah. <clears throat> that's going towards Chelmsford. So, yeah, right. that's not too far from where I am. So, yeah, it's kind of north of London near Stansted, I'm thinking. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, that central. Yeah, that right. sort of area. Yeah. Mm. So, Paul, where would you like to start with your experiences? Um, okay, so... Um, I uh, moved, I was born in the east of London, but I moved to Brentwood with my family when I was about uh, two or three years old. We Mm -hmm. moved into a a very old terraced house in Brentwood, uh, not far from Chelmsford. Um, To give that some background, these terraced houses down this road were built on farmland. Um, Mm -hmm. And some of my experiences in that house, I remember well, and some of them have been told told to me because I was so young, I've probably forgotten them. So they were told to me by my parents. So there were many, many strange encounters that um, I mainly had, but also my parents had one or two as well. So <clears throat> um, where to start with all this? I'll, I'll jump in with the fairies. So yes. um, I would I would see um, uh, a little man who uh, I've since been told 
is is like one of the bog people that come from Holland. I think oh. I'm right in saying that. So this guy used to used to walk into my room. He would be he would he was the same height as me, and at the time I was between you know sort of four or five six years old. Mm. Um, he had very uh, a very tanned uh, skin. Mm. Um, he wore a cap. He wore a leather apron, um, oh. and he would just walk into the room, smile, and sort of stand there and stare at me. But we never had any communication. Um, but he would. I would often see him walking on the landing or, or coming out of another room in the upstairs and walking into my room and just kind of looking at me, really. Um, and uh, perhaps a little bit more spectacular than that, if you like, was um, <clears throat> something else I experienced in my bedroom were these female uh, fairies and they were dressed very differently to the guy that I've just described yeah. so the, these um, <clears throat> female fairies uh -huh. look like they came out of the, the middle ages they they had cone-shaped hats with veils pulled over their faces Amazing. Um, and their dress was very sort of medieval yeah. now they weren't very nice oh. they used to kind of encircle me in the middle of my bedroom and push me about a bit. I, I I think they used to speak as well, but I can't really remember anything that was said because I was so young. Okay. Um, I, I just didn't like them, and I dreaded them coming out from under my bed. Mm. Now, <clears throat> at this point, some people that's, uh, that are listening to me talk about this might think, well, you know, you were dreaming it, mm. and I can I can def I've I've given this a lot of thought. Yeah. And um, I'm 100% certain that this was uh, not a dream. This was something that I was actually experiencing mm. in, my, in my bedroom and in the upstairs of my house. Something else that happened as well was um, I would often go into my mum and dad's bedroom at night and uh, I would say, I've been talking to that lady in grey again. And evidently this lady in grey used to stand at the foot of my bed and we used to have conversations um, that I sadly don't remember. That's what's been told to me. But mm. my my parents, uh, on at least two occasions, experienced in the middle of the night a woman standing at the foot of their bed, looking down on them as if to say, what are you doing in my bed? And she, she was dressed maid's outfit. <clears throat> so these houses were built on old, very old farmland. I see. So that... Can I can we just go back to sure. um, what you were talking about the little past the little man because mm -hmm. that's pretty spectacular, Paul. <laughs> it was. I know. And I, I feel. I feel. You know. When I'm when I'm sort yeah. of recalling all this, and I, I've told yeah. you know one of other people about this before, and and uh, you get very strange looks, obviously. Um, but the. Uh, an interesting thing was I've I've seen obviously because of these experiences mm -hmm. that I've had I've I've watched one or two documentaries about fairies and yeah. I watched one where this guy was talking about standing in a field in a very beautiful remote spot somewhere in this yes. country yeah. and all of a sudden he heard uh, it started to rain but the sun was out and he heard these uh, voices and singing uh -huh. and. Um, and it was spectacular. And then he happened to look down to his feet mm. and he saw these two um, little people. Yeah. One one was rolling up his shadow. Mm -hmm. I think the other one was, was trying to nick his laces off his shoes or something like that. But the, the way he described them, they were identical to, to this guy that I saw in my bedroom. That's when my sort of my ears pricked up because yeah. he described them as being a bit dirty looking very mm -hmm. skin, um mm -hmm. and pretty much the same as as what I saw when I was in um in my house in Brentwood so yeah. that kind of gave me some uh, verification if you like yeah I've seen that video that you're talking about because it was, right. it was from a documentary wasn't it by a Canadian um documentary maker I've forgotten his name um it's something called the, the fairy path it had lots yeah. of people on it, didn't it? Talking about yeah, history. something like that. But this, the, the, I think it, it was that documentary. But this particular guy that I'm talking about was Scottish, yeah. I think, and he was talking about an experience he had in this country. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yeah. 
yeah. But yeah, that was a good documentary. Yeah. Mm, yeah, and what you the description as well also fits some sightings of pixies in my part of the world on Dartmoor, where, um, for example, in the 1950s, a woman was on Haytor, which is a, for people who don't know, it's a, a big pile of rocks <laughs> on Dartmoor, where um, she was there with her son on a sunny summer's day. She was wandering by herself and she saw this little man emerge from the rocks and uh, he was dressed in similar clothing that you described. It's like a brown smock with um, mm. a cord around his yeah. waist. Um, I think she described him as brown skinned, you know, a bit wizened looking. Yes. Um, so in this part of the world, we call them pixies, but in Essex, you know, similar sort of being. I don't know what was what they called in your part of the world, the fairies. Do you know? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert uh, on this this kind of thing. I just have my personal experiences. Um, yes. Yeah. As, yeah. As I understand it, there are many different types of fairies, good yeah. and bad. Yeah. Different races. Yeah. Yeah. And what did he? Could you describe his facial features? Because I mean, I was interested in that. In mm. you know, like their eyes, with their eyes similar to ours, human. Well, or... we never. I never stood um, up close to him. He was well, the the closest I can remember him being to me was about, I'd say, eight foot away, perhaps. Yeah. Um, so he wore a cap. He was kind of tan skin. Mm. He smiled. He looked dirty. Um, spe very specific features would, mm. and I mean, I'm, I'm going back over 40 years now as well, so um, I can't be too specific about his appearance mm. other than what he was wearing and the colour of his skin, he wore a cap, etc. Yeah, and the brown clothing as well, because on farms, people, um, you know, in the old sort of pre industrial times. Mm. People in farmhouses talked about the brownies, didn't they, that came in to help people in the farmhouses and, you know, this idea of the brownies. So I want, I'm wondering whether he could be a remnant of those spirits that were that, yeah. farmers on the farmland. Um, that would make a lot of sense, definitely. I didn't yeah. know that. And that's, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got goosebumps now. That's, that's, that's very, very interesting. Yeah, so was he... He came across as a friendly spirit. Yes. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't unfriendly. He. Oh. I remember him. He was always smiling. This guy. He was always oh. smiling. So, and I, I mm. um, just trying to remember now. I don't ever remember being frightened by him at all, or no. you know, feeling in any sort of danger. But um, it was different with the female fairies that I saw in my room. They were a different, um, different thing altogether, really. So were they human-like? I mean, how what sort of yes. size were they? Yeah, so they were very... Yeah, they were human-like, but as I say, they were. I remember them as being my height, and at the time I would have been between sort of four and six years old, so yeah. uh, maybe kind of, you know, two to three foot tall. Okay, so like these little women, little people. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah. were sort of... How many of them were there, Paul, did you say? Um, I, I would say at any one time, uh, at least six or seven, six quite a few. Seven. Right. Yeah. They right. used to encircle me. They used to encircle me and, and prod me and, and poke me about. And uh, oh I don't remember them being very friendly at all. Um, mm -hmm. And I never saw them with the guy. It was either one or the other. Okay. So it sounded like separate. Like they're on kind of separate levels of dimensions, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I mean, the, the guy, the guy never came out from under my bed, but the women always did. Mm. So the guy didn't think to appear from nowhere. I'd often just see him walking yeah. up the steps of my uh, landing or whatever. Um, I can remember that, and I can remember him just walking into my room from the doorway. But I can't. Mm. I never saw him come out from under the bed like the women did. 
So it's almost like, do you feel they did that to scare you? It sounds like a, that they wanted to unnerve you, these fairy women. Hard, it's very hard to say. Um, you know, I've I've analysed it quite a lot in my mind. Yeah. You know, for a very long time, I didn't I didn't give this a thought for for decades. No, um, yeah, sure. Not long after mm. um, it stopped, we moved we moved house again when I was seven, mm. um, uh, and I don't think I really gave it any thought until about maybe ten years ago when I had my second experience. Okay. Um, so yeah, so. Yes, but I'm I'm very 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 glad and honoured that I did experience it, even though some of it wasn't nice. Yeah, it was uh, something that, as I understand it, most people don't ever experience, even as children. So, mm -hmm. so I was very lucky in a way. Did you get a sense of why they were pushing you around? Was it just for the sake of being unkind, or were they trying to tell you something, or? Well, I could be getting this wrong because, as I say, it was a long time ago, but I, I would kind of veer towards the latter. I think that they were just generally not very nice. Not nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could be wrong because it was a long time ago, but that's just how I kind of remember it, remember it. Yeah. Sort of feeling very uncomfortable with them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, not not knowing how to, to get, get away from them. Mm. That's a difficult thing to deal with it as a child, isn't it? And um, um, in folklore, there are these stories of fairies, you know, stealing children or yeah. being unkind towards children. So, yeah. Did the women, you do you remember any colours of their clothing? Did you see them in... Black and white, or was it full color? Because I know some full people. Color. Definitely full color. Yeah. Um, I can't. I can't be too specific about uh, the patterns or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I do just remember their costume, if you like. It, it came across mm -hmm. to me as a kid as being like a costume because they looked their dresses and their veils and and cone shaped hats looked very medieval to me. Yeah, it sounds it, and it's you know it's interesting. I spoke to other people that have seen fairies in medieval dress um mm. seems to be one of the eras that you know of dress that people see fairies in or it's mm. pre-industrial kind of clothing mm. I, um, I saw um i saw a graham hancock lecture on elves and leprechauns and things like that a, f a few years ago now and he meant he said the same thing he said that very often you see these fairies in kind of medieval costume. Um, mm -hmm. and, and he showed the pictures of them and they had these cone-shaped hats with veils over. And I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. yeah, so so there is definitely something going on. And I also, I don't, I was never traumatised by it. I, I remember, as I've said, feeling uncomfortable with the female fairies, but I never, I, as far as I'm aware, I, I've not been traumatised by the, you know, that episode at all. Mm. Yeah. So maybe they were, just, they were just being a bit sort of uh, bullyish or whatever, but they I don't think they ever uh, were, were really kind of um, dangerous or anything like that. No. Okay. Yeah. So it just sounds like they were teasing you, but in a... Mischievous, yeah. Mischievous. Yeah. and um, But I don't think it was anything too dark. I just mm -hmm. think, you know, they were just uh, kind of... Um, enjoying having some sort of power over me maybe yeah sounds like it and there do you remember they I know you don't remember exactly what they said to you but do you have a sense of were they speaking to you in English were they speaking to you telepathically or mm -hmm. how, how were they communicating with you was it with you know um through thought or were they speaking in a different language I don't I really don't, I don't think it was a different language no I think it was either uh telepathically or or um, in English but again I can't remember specifically I just remember that the guy never said a word no. and the women and the women I think they did it wouldn't surprise me if it was telepathic that I'd probably moved more towards that but I can't exactly remember so mm -hmm. it would be 
no, yeah. I wouldn't be making it up if I said definitely one thing or the other. Mm. But um, I've got a feeling it was probably telepathic because it wasn't a big house. It was a terrace house and there were... Um, there was my, you know, my younger sister sleeping in the next room and my mum and dad sleeping in another room. So if they'd been making a lot of noise, I think they would have woken some people up probably. Yes, yeah, sure. It's interesting, isn't it, that the, I mean, I've heard or read as well the same kind of thing with people that experience alien abductions where they can be taken from... Um, you know, sleeping next to their wife or husband and they can be taken and their husband or wife doesn't wake up and no thing and they've they've gone and come back. It's almost like they're in another bubble of existence. Almost. You, yeah, you I mean yeah. it's that that's uh, that's really opening up the, the conversation. Um yeah. I you know there there are links there definitely, you know. I mean um I've I've kind of read before that, you know, uh the fairy people um, are obviously very kind of synonymous with uh, megalithic stone circles, yeah. something else we're interested in. Um, mm. and some people will even suggest that they may have uh, been involved in the construction of some of these stone circles or pyramids, um, something that we, um, we, we can't build uh, the pyramids that you see on the Giza Plateau today. Uh, I think a Japanese, um, <clears throat> a Japanese group of scientists and uh, architects and builders tried to replicate this, uh, replicate the Great Pyramid about 30 or 40 years ago and failed miserably. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we don't know how they were built. And um, who knows? I mean, you know, truth is stranger than uh, fiction. Mm. Um, it's, I mean, the possibilities are endless, really. Um, I just I just know that they're real. I know they're real because of my experiences, not just as a child, but as an adult as well. So I've got mm. no... No, I mean, it's just like, um, <clears throat> I don't know if what you think, or not, David Icke isn't everyone's cup of tea, but he he says that, you know, uh, we're on this particular frequency and it's it's like um, different radio stations, you know, mm -hmm. different frequencies. And um, perhaps when you're a child, um, a very young child, you're more open uh, or you, you, you're, you've got more kind of ability to see into other worlds yes. and experience other um frequencies if you like mm -hmm. um, who knows <clears throat> yeah i've heard it's something to do with the because we are freshly into this realm it's that idea of these thresholds that we cross so we've you know we're very close to that other realm as children and then we gradually move further away from that realm as we come into you know sort of individuate and Mm. I, I think you're absolutely right I think yeah. so and I think everything about this world uh, especially with regards to children is that we kind of move them away from that we move them away from their imaginations and, mm. and, and their daydreams and you know and I mean these days now we've got um, toddlers in prams uh, playing on phones and stuff oh, you know yeah. so I, I yeah. think the impact of that of modern technology is is probably going to hinder our ability to communicate and experience these other realms. Yeah. I mean, I would say we're, you and I are probably of a similar era of vintage. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And, um, you know, obviously no com home computers or access to internet. So... And I'm an artist. So anything that I wanted to find as a reference, I had to go to the library or, um, you know, people would give me books or I'd look at my the books that my parents had or I'd have to go outside into the garden if, you know, if I wanted to see, draw a flower or something. But now we can, we can just access that information within seconds, can't we? Um mm. There's less and less need um, for people to go out and look, actually physically look for this information. Whereas when we were growing up, we had to had to do that and had time to for our imaginations to develop. 
um, mm. blossom. So, mm. so important for children. It is, yeah, it's worrying. Well, I absolutely agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. It's uh, Claire. It's. Mm. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's not all bad. I mean, we're talking on Zoom at the moment, so I'm not saying all technology is, is bad and evil. I just think yeah. that it's how it's used. And I also think that um, <clears throat> children, especially young children, I, I really don't think that they should, uh, this is just me, have access to that kind of technology at a very young age. I think it robs them of something very special and very important. Mm. Yes, I think... I think there is a danger of that and you know unless there's some balance um definitely mm. and when you were growing up Paul did you have some access to nature was it did you was it a very urban landscape that you grew up in like in a yeah, it, was, it was fairly urban I, I grew up I mean yeah I, I grew up in Brentwood in Essex yeah. and um mm. it's quite it's a big town um mm. but I the road I'm talking about where I first encountered the fairies was uh literally on the back uh, around the back of the high street in Brentwood mm. um so it's very urban um uh, it's actually Brentwood High Street is where they filmed The Only Way is Essex. <laughs> oh, so, so, yeah, a complete, a complete contrast to my fairy stories um, and my experiences. Yeah. It was literally just a one-minute one walk away. But, um, uh, yeah, so growing up in Brentwood, it was fairly urban. I mean, but at the same time, I was the sort of kid that would love to go out on my bike, either on my own or with friends. And, mm -hmm. We would cycle for literally miles into the countryside in Brentwood, which which is very beautiful. I mentioned Weald earlier. That's very, very nice. Um, mm -hmm. so, I, so I think it was balanced, really. I had a sort of a balanced um, upbringing where, you know, I lived pretty much in the middle of the town, but a lot of the surrounding areas are very, very beautiful in Brentwood. Yeah. And the, the lady you mentioned, the lady in grey, did you feel that she was part of the fairy realm as well or a uh, human spirit or sorry that which lady was that the lady, oh the lady in grey the, the lady in grey the foot of the bed yeah, yeah i i have no memory of that that's something that my mum has told me about as, as an adult we used to come into our room in the middle of the night and you used to say i've been talking to that lady in grey again uh, whether that was the lady that my parents saw at the foot of the bed who was dressed in an old farm maid's outfit, mm. I, I don't know. But um, I, I have no memory of that at all. It's just something that evidently I did quite a lot and it happened quite frequently. Oh, isn't that interesting that you've got a farm maid there mm. with this brownie-type fairy? The yeah. The fairy. Yeah. I mean, I, I can remember um, the, the the female fairies. Their skin was quite dark as well, right? So they could have been of the same race as the little guy. Yeah. Uh, um, they, but their their what they were wearing was very different. They they looked like they just um, come out of some sort of medieval ball, if you like. Oh, you know. Okay. Yeah. Whereas the guy it looked like he'd been. He was like he looked. Like, he looks a bit like a, a blacksmith or something. Oh, a blacksmith. Oh, I've got chills. Well, he had an apron and yeah. he, had, uh, he had, he was wearing an apron and he looked very, like, as you said, kind of wizened and uh, mm. a bit dirty, like, you know, like he'd been working or something or just hadn't had a bath. Mm -hmm. or <laughs> I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, but so, yeah, I, I guess you could say if you, if you imagined like an old, a very old blacksmith from, I don't know, a few hundred years ago. Yes. That, that would be what I was looking at, only obviously this guy was probably no more than three foot tall. Yeah. And what was there, did he look humanoid or was there, yes. did he have yeah. features about him that were different to us? For example, the classic, you know, pointy ears or... Well, he was wearing a cap, so I don't remember seeing his ears or noticing his ears particularly. Um, uh he may, he may, his teeth may have been golden, thinking about it, a bit yellow, thinking about um, it. He was always smiling, as I say, and um, yes, but specific features, uh, you know, sort of 40 years on, uh, very difficult for me yeah, to sort of sure. remember. Yeah, appreciate that. 
So where would you like to go to next? If you is that everything you wanted to share about those experiences? Um well I had um, so that was the the my childhood fairy experiences ended when I left that house to, to move okay. uh, a mile down the road. Mm. Excuse me one moment, I'm just gonna um yeah. one second. Back, yeah. Um um so the next experience I had was about nine or ten years ago, and that was a very different experience. And it it wasn't local to me at all. I was um, I was celebrating sol summer solstice at Avebury, mm -hmm. uh, and having a very good time. Um, had a, cu a couple of uh, pints in the Red Lion pub. If if you know Avebury, there's a, yeah, a pub I right in the middle of the circle. Yeah, so yeah. Had a nice couple of pints of ale and sitting out in the field with friends and stuff and then it started to rain unfortunately so my car was parked right at the bottom of the stone circle yeah. so I thought I'm not going to get wet because I'm going to be out all night so I'm going to go and sit in my car for a while until the rain has stopped so that's exactly what I did mm -hmm. um, so there I am sitting in my car minding my own business and um, this this makes me uh, this experience is obviously it's a lot more recent and uh for me personally it was it was absolutely magical and um <clears throat> my favorite exp the best experience i ever had by mile yeah. so I'm, I'm sitting in my car minding my own business and i just noticed in the corner of my eye something by my wing mirror on my driver's side yeah so i've looked and uh <clears throat> oh my god I've I've seen a translucent um, little guy, no more than I don't know eight inches tall, and mm. he is translucent. I can sort of see through him. He and he's he's in a vehicle which is flying past my car, wow. very close, very close to my car, no more than less than a foot away from my car. So very very close. Yeah, and. Uh, he's moving very slowly and I'm just looking at this thinking this is not happening <laughs> what, this might be what you know somebody's put something in my beer um and um so I got very excited and, and I tapped on my window to yeah. see if he could if he noticed or if he could hear me and he did and so as he's turned he's looked at me really I, wow. yeah yes he's looked right at me and I've looked yeah. I'm looking right at him and I've put my my index finger on the car window, and he he's done the same. So we kind of touched fingers through the glass. Oh, he, gave wow. me a, he gave me a really big happy smile, oh. like as if to say, like you can see me. Yeah. yeah, I think he was surprised that I could see him. Yeah, and we kind of touched fingers through the glass, and then he sort of turned away and kind of bobbed along and carried on, you know, move moving on and. Um, Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I was aware at the time, but I I, I know now that um, traditionally on summer solstice, fairies move from fort to fort, don't they? Yeah. So perhaps that's what this guy was doing. He was he was on the move, albeit very slowly, from what I, I saw. When yeah. he when he passed my car window, I kind of looked back and and he'd gone. So <clears throat> he just came into my uh, my vision as he was like you know literally right by my car window mm. but the so the that that particular experience didn't end at that moment because what okay. followed it was even more spectacular by the way before i do that i should yeah. say that it was you i'm sure it was you that yeah. told me it was bogarts that he was a bogart no i no right okay so so somebody else has told me this then so ah Okay. There, are, there is a um, a race or a species or whatever you want to call it of, of fairies. They're called bogarts. Oh yeah. These are. Yeah. I didn't know this at the time. And these are little fairies that mm. move about in vehicles. Now, there's there's a story you can find it online about these children that used to encounter these bogarts. And they used, to, uh, and I think they even made a television program about it. I'm going back possibly to the 70s. Mm. Uh, and the, the, the place begins with a W, and I've forgotten the name of the place. Oh, but it begins... Yes, the Willerton Gnomes. Very yes, 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 that's the one. That's yeah. the one. Mm. They were both arts. 
the children describe these fairies as being in vehicles. Yeah. And that's exactly what I saw at Avebury. This little guy in, uh, it looks a bit like, and this is going to make you laugh, but it looks a little bit like a flying teapot. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know if it was literally, you know, I don't know if that, but it just had that kind of shape, almost like um, like a, uh, a lamp, you know, like a, what's he called? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the lamp, the genie. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, the genie, yeah, the brass lamp, the, the, the genies. Yeah, a bit like that, a bit like that, with his kind of the upper half of his body sticking out at the top as he was driving it. Um, so oh. anyway, so I found that about those Bogarts. So so that was some more kind of like, you know, verification of what I'd experienced. But as he passed, yeah. uh, the next thing, was even more spectacular so right so that, that uh, literally within a few seconds of that ending no more than say mm-hmm. 10 seconds if i remember it yeah yeah i looked out I'm, I'm at the bottom of the avery stone circle parked up in my car there's there's a, a, a small line of houses where i'm parked yeah. and i've looked out across the road i think it's the bath road i've looked just looked out and I, i've noticed there's like um, a hedge mm-hmm. that's probably foot tall and there's just fields over the other side of it and all of a sudden I've seen like this kind of flickering image coming over the hedge yeah and moving towards my car oh and as 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 it kind of got closer the flickering slowed and I started to be able to see these kind of 3d images oh wow uh, mm-hmm. And this happened five or six, so I got five or six different images, one after the other. I can I only could make out the the last two images that were that came at me. Um the the penultimate one was uh just very, very, very weird. Oh, <laughs> I'm not okay. even sure I can like yeah. tell you about it because it was bizarre. Oh, I'd love but to then, try, try and describe <laughs> okay. it. Okay, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I will tell you about that, but I'll tell you about the last image first. So the last image I saw, yeah. do, you, do, you know, um, do you know the Vitruvian man that was painted by Leonardo da Vinci? Yes, the, the, the man. The man with the arms outstretched yeah. and the legs outstretched. And yeah. that was da Vinci's way, I think, of saying, you know, man is made in the image of God as above, so below. Yeah. So I, the last image I saw were, were of two Vitruvian men, what looked like Vitruvian men, and they were kind of facing each other um, as uh, as yeah. I saw them. Yeah. And for me, afterwards, I saw this as verification of questions that I'd been asking about reality at the time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I was uh, cut a long story short. Basically, I was I was really sort of investigating who we are as, as human beings, where did we come from, where did we go to afterwards, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that was kind of like the perfect answer. Um, so are you are, you, are yeah. you sure you want to know about the penultimate image? Before we move on to that. <laughs> yeah, go on then, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in these images of the, the Vitruvian men images. I'm just interested in what, what answer... Did it give to you? What's your personal? The the man is made in the image. Man is made in the image of God. That that's how I took it. That that um mm. that we we were created by um a superior being or a superior species of beings that um I think look just like us. Mm. Okay. Angels or whatever, I don't know, but that that's just how I interpreted that. You know, that we we didn't we're not I don't personally believe that we evolved from monkeys. I don't think that's you know, I think that's uh, false. Um I think we came here or we were created if you like. Um for a long time I thought that we might we may have been genetically manipulated throughout the history of this planet. Uh, by another species or whether it was aliens or whatever I don't know that's alluded to in the film 2001 a space odyssey Mm -hmm. Um, for a long time I thought maybe there is something in the theory of evolution and just along the way 
something has kind of interfered with us and manipulated us genetically. And now we find ourselves as, you know, uh, the species that we are today, if you like. But um, <clears throat> who knows? At the end of the day, the, the last message I got, that that the last image I got, that's how I interpreted it, interpreted it was yeah. that, you know, we, we're made in the image of, of God. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting that you've you've got all of these different levels of experience going on by the sounds of it with this very sort of being from what we would term as the fairy realm. And then there's those crossovers with possibly crossovers with extraterrestrials. <laughs> well, yeah, some people some people as you as you kind of alluded to earlier in our conversation, you you know, you said that some people experience um uh being abducted mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you know they they're suggesting that it's actually the little people or and i i saw another documentary that was based in iceland because iceland has a rich tradition of of uh fairy folklore yeah. they, they take fairies very you know very seriously like the irish do mm -hmm. um and the interest this this i watched this documentary years after uh, quite recently Mm -hmm. um, my experience in Avebury and um, there was a psychic uh, clairvoyant woman yeah. she was standing in the middle of literally middle of nowhere in Iceland it was just mm -hmm. a, a kind of marshland and there was some rocks yeah. and she stopped and, and the camera crew stopped with her and she said oh, I'm communicating with a little fairy um, uh, there are literally hundreds of fairies in those rocks now they're gathered together there is a, a fairy man who is giving a lecture to all the other fairies. Mm -hmm. And this was being communicated to her by um, this little fairy that was sitting towards the back. And and she was saying that the, the fairies are communicating to each other with uh, 3D images. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, and that, at that point, I fell off my chair. Wow. Because I was like, oh my god, that's that's what I saw. That's what I saw in Avebury. You know, I saw the little Bogart man fly mm -hmm. past, uh, kind of fly past my car, and then I saw these flickering images coming out from mm -hmm. over this this hedge towards my car. And I thought maybe I don't know, maybe that was his little present for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know, but obviously, you know, this. Um, that documentary and what the, the the female psychic was saying about the 3D images and that's how they communicate to each other or how they are communicating to each other. It's, it was like one big kind of fairy university within these rocks. Yes. And uh, the guy was giving a lecture, but he was doing it not by talking, but mm -hmm. by showing these images. Yeah. I. It's another documentary. I, I know which one you're talking about. I've seen that one. And... Yeah, I'll put it in the. I've saved it in in on one of my playlists, so I'll put it as a link to this episode for people to watch because it is fascinating, isn't it? And yeah, it's, it's yeah. really it's probably my favourite. I think the yeah. fairy documentary is the Atlantic one. It's really good. Mm. Wow. So, can you share the other two images, or are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, I, saw, I saw two images. You, you've, you've asked for it, so I'm going to tell you. So, I saw, I saw. Um, obviously, I've described the last one, but the one before that, there were there were five or six, but I only remember the last two. Right. So the penultimate one, I saw two gorillas. One gorilla had a keyboard built into its back, wow. and the other gorilla was behind it playing that keyboard and I'll put this in a polite way, yeah. uh, making love to the other gorilla at the same time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> very, very weird. And But for some reason I remember that. And I, I also interpreted that as having – that was a personal message. Hmm. Which I can't really disclose on YouTube or Spotify, or wherever we are. But it was a personal message that, on reflection, made a lot of sense to me at the time because I used to be mm -hmm. a musician. Um, I used to be a music teacher mm -hmm. as well. Um, at the time, <clears throat> it, it made a lot of sense. Okay. So, 
it was a personal message but that that's basically mm -hmm. what i saw anyway so they they were just project projecting something that was uh meaningless and abstract and and kind of like weird it, it was it was weird but it, it had meaning to me it's meaningful so it's it's mm. like they've read your consciousness quite possibly yeah whoever was behind this you know this wasn't this wasn't coming out of my imagination this was no. very crystal clear in, yeah. you know in my vision i saw this very very clearly mm. um, so whoever was behind that level of technology is wow you know wow yeah that's really really interesting because it just opens up so many questions about you know if if it was the fae you know as you say giving you this gift of um this information that you've been asking for and you know you'd have this very sort of I mean that's such a moving interaction that you had with that little person isn't it, it, it I mean it was it was incredible um Claire it was it was um it's something that I will never forget it was something that I remember for as long as I live and it was an absolute gift yeah. it was an absolute life-changing moment for me I, I've never been the same since as a person mm -hmm. uh it's it was incredible and um I'm sure I'm not the only person to have experienced something like that, but I guess, you know, it is kind of rare. So I'm extremely fortunate to have experienced mm. that and to know that there are, there's much more to this reality than meets the eye. You know, we do, we're just experiencing a tiny, tiny fraction of it. Yes. And isn't it interesting that they, the Fae are, Flying around in little vehicles, almost like... I just think they're so cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. almost like the the idea of flying saucers, UFOs, um, another sort of interface. Possibly, yeah. It's, it's, there's possibly a connection. I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't personally made uh, a very strong connection between oh. the, the folk and aliens. I'm not saying that, that there isn't one. I'm just... No. I mean... Um, the the vehicle that the little Bogart guy that was that flew past my window um was in it looked a lot more like a flying teapot than a, a flying saucer yeah so it sounds more, more like a the sort of mischievous energy of fairies um this kind of child it's kind of it's childlike playful it was yeah i mean this guy looked a bit like a cartoon it looked, it looked, I mean, he was real. I know he was real and he was like a, a spirit. Yeah. I was seeing a spirit, but mm. um, he, he, his actual features, if you like, were almost kind of cartoon-like. And so for quite a while afterwards, I wondered, um, you know, where did those Disney cartoons come from? Those yeah. characters like, for example, Jiminy Cricket. I mean that that's quite a close representation of what I saw in Avebury. Okay. You know, it's not too far yeah. away at all. There's also I, I should add. There's also um, I don't know if you're a big music fan, but there's there's a big um, there was a band in the seventies, a progressive rock band. Yeah, they were called Gong G O N G. Oh yeah, and yeah. The, the, yeah, I'm a big fan. The lead singer David Allen, who yeah. uh, sadly passed away a few years ago. Um, he experienced these, he had the encounters with these beings quite regularly and he described them as, as being in flying teapots. So, right. so I'm getting chills because I have spoken to, you know, to friends that, um, for example, had taken mushrooms, drunk a lot mm -hmm. of mushroom tea and then mm -hmm. seen what they described as pixies, as particular persons that it was like pixies flying around in cups and saucers. Yep, yep, exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I've um, have I had a similar ex not not I no I, I've I've done similar substances and had similar mm -hmm. kind of experiences, but not not as uh, kind of specific as the Bogart guy that I had in Avebury. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I promise you, I only had two pints of beer that night. <laughs> so there, that was not assisted in any way at all. No, uh, no. But, but yeah, but um, I, I have, 
I've seen things move about in, in vehicles in, in the mm. sky when I've been on substances in the past, yeah. um, but nothing as, as clear and as, you know, sort of crystal clear as what I experienced in Avebury, and that was just, you know. Yeah, that is that is amazing. Mm. What a special experience. Thank you for sharing that. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, yeah. it's a pleasure sharing it. You know, I, yeah. I used to be quite embarrassed. That I didn't talk about the my fairy episodes in as a kid until mm. uh, about maybe 10 years ago. Right. Um, yeah. And I, I mentioned it to a family party once. I think, you know, I just came out with it mm. and uh, got a few smiles and a few sniggers, as you do. Um, but I'd really forgotten about it for quite a long time, and it was um, probably the Avebury experience that kind of uh, triggered the memories of, of being a kid and experiencing what I did in Brentwood, so... Yeah. So yeah, it's it's an absolute gift that you 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 really unless you've experienced something like that, you really can't appreciate it. You know, it's uh, mm. it's very real, mm. very real. It's not it's not in any way, shape, or form a, a hallucination. No. You're seeing into another world, mm. and uh, it's that and that itself is is a great privilege. Mm. Yeah, and I, I mean, I from my own experiences, I know it's a uh, it's a very heartfelt experience. It's something that you feel in your heart, feel mm. physically. Um, yes. And like you say, it does change your perspective. It's a very mind-opening, perspective-changing mm. um, experience of the world. I mean, um, when I was at university, uh, my first sort of visual experience of, of a fairy, and I didn't have fairy encounters um, as a child. I had other strange experiences. But, yeah, it was at university, and and I feel that experience where I saw this little being sat in my rubber plant or fig plant, they're also known as, next to my bed um, in the middle of the night, just very briefly, this little figure sat in that the plant. Um, I think that was to do with my connection with the landscape. That's what I feel anyway, because I was, I was in Wales, I was missing Devon, I was missing Dartmoor, which I'd grown up feeling very close to. And um, I was reaching for some connection to the landscape. And through my arts, which I was doing at university, I was going out on the Gower, which is quite similar sort of landscape to Dartmoor. It's very rugged. Mm -hmm. um, lots of, there is fairy folklore um, from that area as well. But I didn't know about that. I didn't know anything about the folklore mm. in that part of the world. So it's almost like I was reaching out for this connection, mm. reconnecting with the landscape. And mm. then I had this almost like this little affirmation that came from the mm. fairy to say, yep, we're here. <laughs> mm. That's yeah. lovely. That's yeah. really lovely. I don't think I've ever met anyone else that has had a fairy encounter before. So that's the first for me. So it's right. it's lovely to be able to have this conversation today with you. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah, I, you know, I had other experiences and written about them and um, on different levels, not necessarily always seeing fairies, but just experience, feeling their presence. Mm. So... I mean, how did you're talking about how that life changing that was for you, that experience? How has your life changed since then? Did once you left um, Avery and moved on with your life back at home, were there any um, changes that happened for you? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Prior to, prior to that, I was an estate agent. And if there's any estate agents listening to this, I'm not knocking estate agents at all. Mm. Uh, but um, shortly after that, that's when I became a music teacher, which I did for the best part of 10 years. Wow. Um, and uh, that came to an end, unfortunately, with COVID. Um, mm. But now I'm, um, I've just, well, I've, I've been running a, 
uh, a supplements and herbs business now for the last two years, mm. two and a half years. Um, so I guess my my priorities are very different now to what they used to be. Um, you know, I'm, I don't. We all we all need money to survive, but I'm not a carrot chaser in any way. You know, I'm. Um, I'm a lot more grateful for everything that comes my way. I, you know, I practice gratitude all the time. Mm. Um, I see life very differently as a as a result of that experience. You know, very definitely. You know, I'm a lot mm. more open minded to lots of different things. At the same time, I, I you know I can discern. Uh, you know what I'm being told is is true or not. You know, yeah. It, but yeah, I'm basically a lot more open minded because I know now that there's so as I said before, that we were only experiencing a tiny part of what's out there. Yeah. A tiny part of tiny fraction. Definitely. Um, mm. Yes, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't yeah. be on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, so that that's quite a life change then, to go from very sort of mainstream job or career to stepping in stepping into something you obviously passionate about and then yeah and and sort of um also uh being responsible for myself as well or the being self-employed you know kind of I think that's a big thing as well for me now you know is is uh mm-hmm. sort of um carving out my own path in life yeah that's that's really how it's um changed me I would say more than anything else that's that's where I am now and I really really hope that I have another fairy encounter but it, it's not something you can conjure up I know that I mean maybe I could could have done that when I was four or five years old mm. as as you just alluded to with your story that I, mm. I thought was very interesting and similar but um these days you know we're kind of uh I'm sat in front of a computer screen for eight or nine hours every day mm. you know I'm uh, I'm making supplements and I'm I'm uh, doing all sorts of different uh, you know sort of clerical jobs and all sorts of different things so I think you, your mind has to be in the right space to be able to kind of uh, penetrate other worlds if you like and uh, my life as much as I love what I'm doing at the moment it's it's you know it's uh it's full on so mm. maybe maybe in the, who, who knows maybe in the future I'll, I'll have another experience if I do I'll tell you about it <laughs> I'd love to hear about it of course and yeah. um yeah you're welcome to come back on and I think I mean are there any sacred sites that you want to go to next year Paul or is there anywhere oh millions millions I mean, of all the places that I've been to so far, Glastonbury, that we started out talking about at the start of this yeah. video, um, that's probably my favourite place. Yeah. Um, but there are literally, you know, Great Britain is the capital of the world for, for stone circles and megaliths mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and all these things. So we're so blessed in this country. And, and I've only been to two or three. So there are loads. So hopefully... Um, in the future, I'll be visiting a few more. I'd love to go to Ireland as well. Oh, because yeah. Because in mm. Ireland, there's so many different stone circles and the, the, the culture and the heritage over there for this type of thing is huge. So Ireland's okay. definitely on my list of places to visit. Um, but Glastonbury is, is just a, a very, very special, unique place where mm. I've been there three times and every time I've been there, I've experienced... Um, Rules really sort of light energies and also the opposite. It mm-hmm. can be a very dark place as well. Particularly, I, I found the tour Glastonbury mm-hmm. tour to be quite a dark place, mm-hmm. uh, dark energy there. Um, but yeah, so so I, I'm always keen to get back to Glastonbury. But yeah, there's there's so many places to go out and visit in this country if you're interested in megaliths and stone circles and you know. Yeah, we are lucky. There's quite a few on Dartmoor near where I live. Um, yes, I, I've been to Dartmoor once, but that was I was about eight or nine years old at the time, and oh, okay. uh, yeah. I don't remember too much about it. But um, yeah, Dart, definitely Dartmoor is somewhere I'd love to go to. Mm. Love to go. Yeah. Well, if are you, you, are you still close to Dartmoor now? Yeah, I'm only oh, about twenty-five minute drive. 
Oh, lovely, oh. lovely. I had, a, I had a friend who who went on his own and he he kind of stayed uh, camping, wild camping in Dartmoor yeah. for three weeks. Wow. And he said it was one of the, the best things he ever did. He just loved it. And uh, mm. that's something that I would like to do, definitely. It's just a wild camp in Dartmoor for a while. Yeah, that's something mm. I haven't done either. So, yeah, mm. something I'm aiming to do next year. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, it's been wonderful speaking to you, Paul. And you. Thanks for coming on. And um, please do share anything you want to share about your the work that you do and I'll put up your links obviously under this episode but is there anything that you've got going on that you want to share? Sure yeah I'm, I'm very very passionate other than about fairies I'm, I'm very passionate about natural health um, mm-hmm. so I started my own supplements company in 2019 mm-hmm. um, and it's like I say it's something that I'm very very passionate about mainly because I don't you know, looking at all the science literature out there, I don't believe that you can get all the essential nutrition that you, that our bodies need just from food anymore because of Mm -hmm. the decline in um, food production. Uh, The soil on our farmlands is is so depleted now with nutrients because of Mm -hmm. uh, industrial way they farm and the sprays and all that kind of stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, and that's why, if you you know you look around you now you'll see so many people with so many different autoimmune disorders and yeah. all these things that we'd never heard of you know as little as 40 years ago yeah There's so many different ailments now and, and people so many people are suffering so there are um i my company focuses on the really on the core essential nutrients things like magnesium things like vitamin d vitamin c and k2 and iodine is a big one um and we sell herbs as well and superfoods and all sorts of things so um i i supplement there's still that kind of train of thought out there that you know um oh you can get everything you need from food but it's that's just sad oh sadly i wish it was true but sadly that's just an old cliche now you really can't Mm -hmm. and um, so i believe that we do need to supplement our diet with some Mm -hmm. nutrients to, to avoid all that unpleasantness that I see so many people around me suffering with. Hmm. So people can find all that information on your website? Um, yeah, nutrientnirvana.co.uk. Brilliant. Okay, and you've got, you've got a podcast as well, haven't you? Well, I, I uh, yeah, it's uh, I've got a YouTube channel YouTube. Uh, called Nutrient Nirvana, yeah, and, uh, but it's not all, um, it's not all nutrients and supplements. I've, um, we I've talked to I've had guests on Maria Wheatley I don't know if you know her yeah, but she's been on the channel a few times yeah. Ralph Ellis Ralph Ellis is the man who's discovered the historical Jesus um yeah. he's found him in the historical record um yeah. I've got about 30 uh, interviews with him on the channel which are absolutely mind-blowingly fascinating Ooh, so fantastic. I'm really into ancient and biblical history and mm. and there's a few fairy videos on there as well and um, you'll find all sorts on there, basically. Brilliant. I'll put all those links in the notes for this show. And thank you. thanks for your time talking to me today. It's been a really fascinating discussion and, um, yeah, very thought-provoking as well. So appreciate your time. Thank you, Paul. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Claire. Bye. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Have a great evening. Um, you too. Bye, bye for now. Bye. See ya. See ya. Welcome back. Thank you for listening to the end of the podcast. I hope you can take something away from this conversation. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can contact me at Claire at fairywhisperer.co.uk I'd love to hear from you or if you'd like to be a guest please contact me as well on that email address see you next time remember to keep your heart open and be the change